In this tutorial, we'll take a look at some additional options we have for customizing our Convert to Freeform drag and drop interaction. So one thing we can do is we can actually shuffle the answer choices. So each time the learner visits the interaction, the choices are displayed in a different order. So if we go back to Form View and you come up here to Shuffle, you can see that you have the option to shuffle the answers. And that just means that each time the learners visit the interaction, all four choices will be displayed in a different order. Let's go ahead and check this out to verify that the items are shuffling. So preview the slide. And now I have a different order for the answer choices. And we can verify that by going up to replay and clicking the replay button a couple times. And you can see that it's shuffling all of the answers. All right, so let's look at a couple more options that we have for our drag and drop interaction. And let's click drag and drop options again. So another thing we can do is reveal our drag items one at a time. And this is a really great feature when you have more items than you can fit on the slide, right? So in this case, we only have four items, right? But if we had say 20, well, we could have them come in one at a time, ask the learner to make a choice. And then once they've made a choice, the next item slides in or fades in, or you know, depending on how you set that up. And it's a great way to manage a large number of items. Another option you have here is to return item to the start point if it's either dropped outside of a target or a correct target. So it's another way to provide a little bit more feedback to the learner based on where they drop that initial object. So let's take a look at how that looks. Go ahead and click OK and we'll preview it. So now if I drag an item and I, I move it away from the target, you can see it snaps right back. And this is good if I had even multiple hotspots or multiple targets on the slide. Anytime I drag it away from the correct, it's automatically going to uh, snap back to place. So that's just a quick overview of building drag and drop interactions using Storylines Convert to Freeform. Again, you can use triggers like we did in the first tutorial, or you can use the Convert to Freeform, or you can even use a combination of both of them. So go ahead and practice the activities, and when you feel comfortable, start to add some drag and drop interactions to your next e-learning course.